What's up? Today seemed like a nice day. It's not too hot, not too sunny, a little bit cloudy, but it'll be a good day to fish. And I'm gonna try to fish in a little bit of shade over here, see what I can catch. I mean, it might not be bad at all. Rock bass, y'all. Another rock bass. It's my season of rock bass, I tell you. Get ready to pull them up. Another rock bass. I'm gonna get ready to get out of here, man. It's raining hard. You can see. Whoa, this sucker's jumping crazy. Caught three rock bass. That's enough to do a catch and cook. Once again, it's starting to rain, just like usual. But uh, I caught a couple rock bass, so probably do a catch and cook. You can see. Whoa, this sucker's jumping crazy. Caught three rock bass. That's enough to do a catch and cook. Um, as for the baits, I still was using those green worms. Uh, actually, I use green worms and I use wax worms. So by me using both of those, that's what I ended up using to catch. Um, went under an underpass again. It drizzled for a few seconds and then it stopped. But we're going to probably do a catch and cook today. So let's get it started right about um, now how to fillet and cook rock bass all right things you're gonna need for this catch and cook you're gonna need sharp knife fillet knife fork Two box colors. And gloves. Like I got, uh, must have ran out of latex gloves, but you're going to need like gloves. So any kind of gloves to keep your hands a little bit clean or what, whatnot. But other than that, you won't need anything else. And maybe something to put the fish in. All right, let's get started. All right. Let's get started. What you need to do first is, you know, some nice size rock bass. Sit them aside and get one. We're going to start with one first. And, and rock bass. All right. Off the backbone. Now what I do is normally cut around the gills. So that's the best thing to do first. Just cut around the gills. So you cut at the very top. Sure you got some sharp knives cut along the back and when you cut along the back that's when I use my box cutters because sometimes with these scales 
makes it hard. But the box cutter just cuts it right through. Then I use my knife. Hear that? That's the bone. Flip it over and do the same thing. This fish got some good white meat. See, left the bones on here. Bones. Don't eat the belly meat. I don't eat the belly meat of no fish at all. None of the toxins or nothing. So I don't, I leave all the bones and the most of the belly meat, all of the belly meat, pretty much. I don't eat none of the belly meat. All right. Then this is what you're gonna need your fork and your fillet knife for. Take your fork, hold down the meat, got your fillet knife. Voila. You left the skin and the scales on the meat. You just basically got your meat off, your filet. So you're left with one nice filet. And like I said, I don't eat no belly meat, so you don't see none of the belly meat on here. Just a nice piece of white backstrap meat. Take that, put it in your water, and do the other side. And this does it, I mean, this is pretty quick. I mean, it don't take long to get used to doing it. Once again, all that back straps. Nice white meat in the water. Left the skin and the scales on here. You got all the meat off of that. All right, after you filleted all your fish or all four or however many fish you have, now you turn to the point where you make sure it ain't no bones left in here. You, you fill the fish, 
And it's like I said, mostly since I got most of the back straps, I really don't have no bones left in it at all. Um, this fish don't have a lot of bones in it in any way. And most of the bones that I filleted, I filleted it right into the meat and left it into the meat. So you should be good with mostly all the bones. But it was like maybe one or two bones in here that I cut out. And if you look in here, I, I cut out like right in here. But most of it, most of the meat, um, it didn't have no bones left in it. Maybe two or three bones left. So I just basically cut them out like that V right there. Um, it's a little V here. Um, it's a little V here. But other than that, you should be good to go. Um, make sure you put your meat in cold water. Once you fillet it, you know, clean it up. Fresh, clean water, cold water, preferably. After you do that, you get your grease ready. Things you're gonna need. Andy seasoning. Measuring cup, this is one cup. You're gonna need flour, a hefty bag, and you're gonna need a plate. Let's get started. Take the flour, almost fill up the plate. Just put the flour to fill up the whole front of the plate. See what I'm doing? Just filling up the front of the plate with flour. Then you get the Andy seasoning. And you just use your regular house scissors, cut it open. So we gonna cut that open. And you sprinkle like half of the bag over top. This is some of the best seasoning I ever had too, for fish wise, that I found. Okay, maybe a little bit more. All right, you take that seasoning, that you then put on top of the flour, put the lid on the flour. Get your hefty bag, open it up. Take all your ingredients. Now, some people use sea salt or some people use uh, lari seasoning salt. You can to make it a little more, but I don't even have to add none of that. After you added this Andes, it's pretty well mixed in and it's got a lot of good seasoning in it. So you mix all this together. Now see, really you needed a measuring cup so you can put a cup of flour at a time, but I already have one on the flour. So I knew how much a, a whole cup would be. And once it's mixed together, it's gonna turn like a orangish color. You know, it's gonna be like a orangish white color. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Put a little more Andy. Like I said, you're going to use mostly all the bag. So a little more in there. And once you get done, you know, mixing it together, you know it's going to be orange, a little orangish looking. Yeah, it's about right. Like I said, you mix all that together. And since you use a foam plate, you can throw it away. Keep the mess down. So you, so you ain't making a mess all over the house. So here's your finished product. So all mixed in here with the flour. All right. So now what we're gonna do? 
So we're getting ready to put the fish in and fry some fish. Now you take your fish that you had in that nice cup of cold water and you put it in the bag. Like I said, this fish, nice white meat. Good eating too. Put it all in the bag. The flour should stick. And with the seed and the seasoning, all that should stick directly to your fish. Zip up your bag. And all you're gonna do, like I said, you're keeping a mess down by doing it this way. Shake it up. And see, now you can probably see the orange looking stuff a little bit better now. I'm just gonna shake it up. Make sure your grease is hot if you're using vegetable oil or peanut oil, whatever kind of oil you use, um, olive oil. But I, I use ours in a deep fryer and I use vegetable oil for, for rock bass. All right. Like I said, we have a deep fryer. So once you put the fish in whatever you're frying it in, a skillet or pan or deep fryer, just sit it in there, the meat should be totally coated. You see this meat is totally coated. Drop it in there. Let it cook till it's golden brown. And you should be good. Golden brown, it's right, floating right to the top. You see how it's not cooking so hard no more? That's when you know it's time to take it out. using your own fries. Here's the finished product with some wafer fries. Meat, nice and white, like I said. Let's see how it tastes. A little hot sauce. Perfect. What beautiful white meat. Great. And as always, thanks for watching.